Uh, well, uh, we are very pleased to talk with Stephen Curry, the chair of the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment, Laura, and professor of structural biology at Imperial College in London. Uh, well, I have some questions for you. So if you are ready, I can start with the first one. Uh, yes, please do. I'm very sorry not to be able to join the meeting in person. It's okay. Thank you for being here. Uh, well, uh, since its publication in 2013, the DORA Declaration has been a pioneer in identifying and placing the centrality of responsible research assessment on the agenda of higher education institutions and science and technology councils. Almost 10 years later, uh, what issues continue to be part of the agenda and which new dimensions have been incorporated? Uh, well, I would have to say that uh, even after 10 years or nearly 10 years of, uh, of DORA, um, all of the issues to do with responsible research assessment and embedding good practice are still very much um, on the agenda. You know, changing the culture and changing the incentives around research assessment uh, is something that is involves hard and slow work. I think we have seen some important progress over recent years. There's much more discussion on the international scene now, and we have seen the development and uh, advocacy of new tools such as narrative CVs to help move uh, things in the right direction. In terms of um, new dimensions that have been incorporated, I think there are some important new dimensions that we've seen rise to the fore in the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, and the two that I would name as most important are open science and equity and diversity. And these are obviously important issues and they were around at the time that the declaration was written uh, back in December 2012. Uh, but I think their uh, centrality to uh, our research culture has become much, much more important. And at DORA, we very much recognize that um, open science is about recognizing um, not just the, um, the academic papers that people do, but that people publish, but actually making the whole process of science and scholarship uh, more open. And that very much aligns with DORA because DORA is about recognizing all of the different contributions that researchers make to uh, the scientific and the research and the, and the scholarly enterprise. And I think many people agree that having that more open um, is an important part of making sure that science and scholarship um, are really impacting the world uh, for the better. And um, DORA is very much focused on research assessment. And we know that research assessment practices are shaped and perturbed by biases of different for sorts. And that, uh, for example, um, contributes to the exclusion of women and of people from ethnic minorities um, from the academy. And so we have to be very mindful, I think, of the role that responsible research assessment uh, can bring to making sure that the academy becomes much more inclusive. So we now see research assessment and open science and equity as very much interlinked themes that are very much now focused on recognizing the people uh, in the academic enterprise and not just the products uh, that come out of all of that work. Right. In recent times, uh, many regional and global science organizations have addressed concerns about responsible research assessment. How could you describe the landscape and global conversation on responsible research assessment at present? And how is it possible to combine global guidelines in responsible research assessment with national and local regulations? Uh, that's a very good question. I would say that the discussion um, and the global landscape has really changed um, in the last 10 years. And I would like to think, and I think some of the credit for that can be attributed to the work that DORA has done, but there are many other actors and stakeholders who have been pushing 
uh, for this agenda. I can think of, for example, the Leiden Manifesto, but many other uh, sort of national funders as well have been grappling uh, with this whole concept of responsible um, research assessment. So in the past year alone, for example, we have seen reports coming out of organizations such as the Global Research Council, which has got representatives of national funders from all across the globe, uh, from the European Commission, which is obviously part of the European Union, um, and from UNESCO. And uh, together, these are um, arguing and advocating not just for open science, but seeing um, responsible research assessment as one of the sort of key mechanisms um, for, for helping to drive that. And all of these recommendations that have been published, they do cite uh, DORA and the influence of DORA um, in helping to um, move the conversation in the, in the right direction. And I think each of these is obviously coming from an international organization. And I think there is a shared recognition that the problem of research assessment has to be tackled globally. It's no, there's no point tackling it, you know, in Europe or in Latin America on its own because scholarship and scholars um, are very mobile and very um, international. In terms of whether there is a global organization to lead um, an advocate for setting a sort of global standards around research assessment, well, you know, I'd like to think that DORA uh, plays a part in doing that. And certainly we have a very international constitution now in terms of the membership of our um, steering committee. Uh, but perhaps UNESCO might be a more fitting uh, locus to, to take the lead here. And I know that, you know, following their report on their open science recommendations, which is very much thinking about um, the impact of uh, research assessment practices, is now moving to an implementation phase. So um, we still have a long way to travel, but I am optimistic that there is a, a growing sense of coherence and unity uh, around doing the work that we need to do uh, to get these uh, responsible research assessment practices embedded worldwide. Uh, well, uh, the third one is um, from your perspective as a chair of DORA, what strategies and tools have been most fruitful in engaging different regions, institutions and actors in processes of change in research assessment? Uh, that's another very good question and a, and a challenge we often get at DORA is, well, how do we know that it is working? Uh, because we're not a regulatory body and we, we are not monitoring, uh, we don't have the resources to monitor exactly how practices are changing um, in institutions and in organizations um, around the world. So some of what I have to say is probably a little bit anecdotal, but again, I think things are moving in the right direction. Uh, among, I think, the most useful things that we have done at DORA, uh, now that we've become a much more um, active organization, is firstly creating opportunities for people to meet and discuss. Uh, and we've done that by organizing um, sessions at uh, uh, scientific conferences, organizing um, specific meetings ourselves to bring together important stakeholders. And we have done that uh, with meetings in real life up until 2019. And more recently, uh, we've done it through meetings um, online, which is something that we will con certainly continue post-pandemic, because obviously that um, enables us to bring together um, worldwide audiences. Other things that we have done, I mean, the, de the declaration itself is, is one that is you know, critical of the misuse of journal impact factors and other aggregate measures in research assessment. And so one of the, the, the real um, uh, priorities that we have made for ourselves as an organization is to help develop and create and to promote um, alternatives. Um, and so if you look on our website, uh, sfdora.org, you'll see that we have uh, a growing resource library of tools and ideas that people can use. And we have a growing case studies library um, providing examples of universities and other organizations that have actually signed DORA and then done um, uh, significant work in order to try and um, implement you know, what that means for them. I mean, we're very keen to make sure that certainly our organizational signatories 
are demonstrating to their communities, you know, why did they sign DORA and what exactly does it mean for the practices that they are um, adopting. Now, it is quite difficult to measure that kind of change, but one of the most interesting projects that we have running at the moment is called TARA, and that stands for Tools to Advance Research Assessment. And a key part of that project is to, uh, creating a dashboard which will allow us to track the development and adoption of policies on responsible research assessment as they emerge um, around the world. And so this will help to enrich uh, our resource library and our case studies uh, library and it will give people a way of seeing you know where are the the institutions that are in the vanguard who is blazing a trail and who might have important lessons to teach the rest of the um, community uh, another important activity that we have engaged in that is perhaps less visible is talking to people behind the scenes and we do this sometimes then when uh, it is brought to our attention that an organization that has signed DORA may not be entirely living up to the spirit or the letter of the declaration. And in such cases, uh, when uh, information is brought to our attention, we will often have conversations behind the scene uh, to try and understand exactly what is going on and to help set the organization perhaps back on the on the right path. And that is um, that's work that's not so very visible, but it is an important part of making sure that that DORA really is having an impact in organizations all around the world. Well, uh, thank you. The, the last question has two parts. Uh, firstly, uh, do you have a personal message for responsible research assessment initiatives and specialists in Latin America concerned about different distortions and inequalities in their national research assessment systems? And secondly, uh, how could we make the proposal stronger in terms of the global voice in support of responsible research assessment reforms and good practices? Uh, well, my, my personal message to uh, uh, my colleagues and friends in Latin America uh, would simply be to keep fighting for what you believe in. I know that there is a very powerful community within Latin America that has been thinking very hard about research assessment. We know that uh, there are tensions between within Latin America and in, within different uh, uh, countries in that uh, part of the world. Um, and that's something that we have at DORA become much more aware of because we are very, very grateful um, to the Latin American members of the DORA steering committee. A, a few years ago, we made a very deliberate um, effort in order to make sure that we had truly global representation um, um, around the steering committee table um, at DORA. So I'm you know, grateful to Laura Ravelli uh, from Argentina, Christian uh, Gonzalez Bilo from Chile, and Judith Sutz from Uruguay, uh, who contribute to the discussions. And they've given DORA very important insights into um, you know, the, the problem of research assessment as it's perceived from, from, from Latin America and, and other members from the, the global side have been an important voice around that table too. And those are voices that have sometimes, I think, been lost in the more international um, debates around this, which do tend to be led perhaps uh, more in, in Europe and North America. And we want to make sure um, that, um, uh, that, that that those voices are heard. And so, you know, we've been very grateful for their insights and, and, and in turn, I hope um, that our incorporation of those members into our governance structures has helped to, to amplify the very important voice uh, that comes out of Latin America in, in um, helping us to understand not just the challenges of research assessment, but also, of course, uh, you know, there are um, very important publishing initiatives in uh, Latin America. The Silio uh, initiative, for example, which is a tremendously powerful um, example of diamond open access publishing that I would very much like Europe and North America uh, to learn for uh, learn from in the in the years to come. I was at a meeting um, in Paris in um, in February of this year, and I think it was very clear there that the voice of Latin America is coming through um, loud and clear, and is providing some you know very powerful examples um, for the rest of the world. And clearly, there was a very strong Latin American representation 
um, around the in the working groups that led to the production of the UNESCO um, recommendations on open science, which has an awful lot to say about you know what constitutes good practice uh, in research assessment. So I'm you know I am as I said optimistic for the future. That's that's the type of person that I am. I know we have um, a lot of work ahead, but I do see that there is increasing coordination. Coordination, excuse me. Uh, worldwide in which Latin America plays a very, very important part. And it is my dearest wish that we will continue uh, to work on this problem together because we will only solve it uh, if we work together. Well, Stephen, thank you very much. We are grateful to count on, on giving the International Colloquium and well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luna, and I hope everybody uh, enjoys the conference.